Hi there. I wanted to do a little short video on how to write assessment questions. And this is a video either for students that are writing questions for assessment, which is so great, uh, and for instructors writing assessment questions where they want to get beyond memorization. They want to get to a place where there's critical thinking. They want to move a little bit higher on Bloom's taxonomy scale. They want to allow their students to have more of a voice in the assessment. So, and this is open licensed, so feel free to please use it or not. <laughs> Share it or not. Okay, clarity is the key. So when you're writing these questions, and I've learned this, I've been learning this over and over. If I'm not clear, then I will either get really bizarre answers or I'll get a lot of different answers or I will get a lot of questions. So clarity is key and give details about your expectations. So how much is this question worth? How many, uh, what am I expecting back? How many fragments, how many thoughts, how many ideas am I expecting back from the student? Okay, so if you're writing these as a student, you wanna make sure that you give your expectations of other students. Okay, so why and how type questions really get beyond memorization. So rather than what type of questions, what what a few what questions are fine, but why and how questions move beyond the memorization piece and get to a place where we might analyze and we're moving into um, analysis critical thinking. So here's a couple examples. I teach biology. You might be teaching another. Who knows? Doesn't matter. <clears throat> so why were gymnosperms so dominant on land? What innovation? So there's a why question, there's a what question that goes along with it, just to give them a little more clarity. What innovations, adaptations did they use? So we're asking them to, we're, we're giving them more detail. Use three sentences or fragments. So we need like ideas. And for biology, language, you know, punctuation doesn't matter. So fragments are fine. And you know, this will depend on your topic, but for my topics, I just want the ideas from the student. I don't need them to be uh, perfectly, grammatically perfect at all. No, please no. And also use three fra fragments or sentences and then six points. That tells them how many points, how big is this, okay? And then a follow-up question to that, this, um, this is a shorter question. What innovations did angiosperms have over gymnosperms? So it's a follow-up question in that same there's two questions to this, this um, short answer question. And just listing, just to making a list, just making a list about angiosperms. That's it. It's five points. Okay. So it might just be bullet points. Super short. Compare and contrast terms, my favorite. So on your homeworks, if you are student generating homeworks or if you are teacher generating homeworks, on your homeworks, if you put terminology lists and you have students compare and contrast terms, it's great. It's such a great way to learn and it's such a great way to, to do assessment. So take three terms that maybe aren't obviously related. So this is an anatomy question, but um, compare and contrast the functions of the premotor cortex, the primary auditory cortex, and the basal nuclei. Now, two of those are really similar. Um, Actually, none of them are similar. Disagree. <laughs> so your students, are they part of, are they similar to, are they dissimilar? How are they similar? Um, you can see that I am missing a piece of clarity here. I didn't tell them how many points or how many fragments to put on there. So I'm going to get a lot of really long answers if I don't tell them. So this is actually a good example of not being clear. And I just put this on here so I um, you can see I would I would probably make this a seven point question and I would say we need at least three fragments, possibly four to compare them. How are they similar? How are they dissimilar? And it turns out they are there are some reasons why they're similar. There are some similarities. Definitely. They're all in the cerebrum. We, they can list some similarities, but they can also list dim dissimilarities. Some of the answers are going to be different. That's your student doing some critical thinking, deciding what they want to put in there. And I highly recommend using them on homework as well. I'll talk about the dependent score in a second. Fix and rewrite the sentence. This is a great way to sort of get away from multiple choice questions, but cover a lot of material like they do. So you write a, sta you write a statement, it may or may not be true. 
and like this one's false. This is just not a true statement at all. So the student actually has to rewrite it. Now they can either fix it in their own way. They can fix it in their own way. As long as, the, as, long as they fix it, it's fine. So they could say something like, um, so these are talking about jellyfish and sponges and how many tissues they have. But they could say something like Nadera, uh, Nadaria has two tissues and Peripher only have one. That's one way to fix it. But anyway, they're fixing it, right? Some of the statements that you say that, you're, um, that you might list are true, but they still need to rewrite it with their own words. So they could say something like, or I mean, they could also say ditto, like they agree with everything you wrote. That's fine um, because there's going to be true statements. So in this statement, they could also say uh, analybs are the most complex of the three phyla, of the three worm phyla. So they rewrote it but they could also say ditto. But this is a nice way to allow the student to use their voice for multiple choice style or type of questions where they get to use their voice and reword it so that it makes sense to them. Opinions are always great, especially if they're using knowledge from the class. So you want them to use terms and knowledge from the class. So we talk about um, classification systems in uh, some biology classes. So coyotes are part of it. So even though we talk about these classification systems, we didn't necessarily talk about coyotes, but they know about this order, this carnivorous order. And from a perspective of a strict diet, they aren't true carnivores. Why do you think they're included in this group? And this is your opinion. And I want three or four fragments and six points. So I'm asking for their opinion, but they already know about the carnivorous order. So they already know, they already have a, um, something from the class that they can use. The other thing that you could do is you could do an opinion based with terms where you say, you know, use the term succession and, um, you know, primary and secondary succession in your answer and talk about human disturbances in the Pacific Northwest. You know, lots of different questions that you can ask, but asking an opinion based on knowledge or terms from the class. So, so great.